Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we are working on a new project. This is a uh, Chattanooga Plow Company number 11 three-roller mule-powered cane mill. And yes, we have done some very similar to this in the past. Uh, this is another one that got brought into the shop. Uh, one of my viewers out there found me and asked me if I could help them uh, restore this. Uh, this is actually planning on going to a little historical uh, set up over in South Carolina, I think it is, where they want to get this thing set up to do some uh, uh, sorghum syrup. Uh, so instead of grinding cane, sugar cane, they're going to grind uh, sweet sorghum cane, uh, which was very commonly used, particularly a little farther north than where I'm at down here in deep south Georgia, Florida, Louisiana, South Alabama, down and through there. They mostly did sugar cane. Uh, you get a little bit farther north, the sugar cane wouldn't grow as well, so they grew sweet sorghum uh, and made a syrup out of that that was used for syrup, used for sweetener, etc. cetera, uh, back in the old farm days. So today's goal is I want to get this thing taken apart and kind of evaluate it. Um, you know, I told the customer what I thought it was going to cost to fix this thing up, but that was really all dependent on what we found once we got in here. Uh, if there's any surprises that we find, it, it appears to be in decent shape. There are, I see a few little issues, but nothing too major that I can see, but uh, we really can't tell until we get it taken apart. So without further ado, let's get in here and take this machine down to the co individual components and uh, see what it looks like, give it a good evaluation, and uh, we'll probably start working on getting this thing restored over the next uh, you know, couple of months or what have you. So it'll kind of get worked in as I have time. So let's get in here and start tearing it down. So first things first, let's see if we get this walking beam off. Uh, this is where a pole would attach to this that uh, the mule would then connect to and this would just kind of create a lever that the mule would walk around in a circle and as they did it would uh turn the the cane mill and basically that's what powered this thing so let me uh we'll get a strap on this we'll pull our gantry in here and uh give it some upward force and see how much trouble this thing gives us this appears to be kind of rusted in place. Hopefully it'll come off without too much trouble. I like to give it a little upward pressure and a lot of times I can take a uh, lead hammer or something and kind of hit on this and get it to come off. And there it comes. Yeah, we got it. There we go. This has got, so this is just kind of a squared taper that this just drops down on and it just kind of tape holds in place off that taper. So, uh, got that off. So we got some bearing caps here. They're broken. There's one on each side. Uh, this is something that I'm going to draw it up in the computer in CAD, 3D print a pattern, and we'll get some new ones cast. Uh, will kind of be the game plan on those. Let me get that one off up there. It's broken as well, right? In there, but we need to get it off. Rusty, crusty, but it's coming. And that's all that's left of that one. All right, so next we got the top bearing caps. Uh, I'm gonna loosen these up and see if I can pull those out. Put a little penetrating oil on these. And Yeah, it's going to loosen up nicely. Same thing over here. This one's a little bit tighter. We will replace all this hardware when we put it back together. Put nice fresh new hardware in here, but get those out of the way. 
and these have bronze inserts in the bearings. That's interesting. You can see the bronze in there. Those may get poured with Babbitt when we put them back together just because I'd have to have those cast and uh, we can do Babbitt a lot easier. And I think that shell will hold Babbitt just fine. We'll evaluate that um, a little bit later on, but uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. All right, and see we got another bearing that goes up from the front here. Hmm, let me, probably what we'll do is see if we can just lift this whole top up. Let me um, go ahead and get these screws completely out. That one's out. There's a square nut that that captures on. And there's also a square headed bolt that comes up through there that goes into a little square recess that captures that. And that's what the uh, bearing cap screws down on. All right, we'll get the front one off as well. Stubborn. There it comes. We got the three bolts here holding the top on. Uh, let me Get some penetrating oil on those. <laughs> that one is uh, completely rusted out in the bottom. I see that in a lot of these cane mills right down at the very bottom uh, where the water gets, it just attacks that bolt and uh, rust it out. Let's see what the other ones need. A lot of times they'll break. I'm replacing this hardware, so I'm not worried about it. That's when it came off. That's good. All right, got that one off. Got a nut right here holding this little shroud on. Go ahead and pull that off. And that piece comes right out. This top should come off. I'm gonna probably have to, because this bearing is up here on the front, I'm gonna probably have to have some uh, mechanical help lifting it up. Let me see if I can get a strap on it and uh, we'll see if we can lift that off. What I'm gonna try to do here is see if I can get this panel right here out. There we go. And I'm going to put a uh, lifting eye right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the back side across from it. And that'll give me a lifting point to lift up on this thing. All right, let me see if I can get a strap on those. All right, let's see if we can lift this up. Yeah. Nice and easy. All right. And we'll go ahead 
ahead and pull these panels out. Well, we can see the remains of the last uh, bit of stuff that they ground in here. That looks like uh, some stock off of some some sorghum or cane or whatever they were crushing last time, along with a bunch of dirt and grime, which is not unusual to find in these either. So I see we can get the gears off the top and uh, continue tearing this thing down. Well, I just noticed one issue we're going to have to deal with. This uh, shaft is bent. I don't know if that's showing up in the camera or not, depending on the angle you look at it, but it is bent kind of back toward me. I don't think that's a deal breaker, but uh, we'll have to uh, have to try to straighten that out. That's going to make turning these challenging, but hopefully we can uh, get it taken care of. Just kind of tapping these around a little bit. Put a little lube on there. gears off. There it comes. Just broke. There we go. There we go. Give a little mechanical leverage that always helps. Got the main uh, roller here to come out. There we go. Very good. Now we got a bunch of dirt and grease and you name it down here. Insect shells. There's enough uh, dirt in here to plant a garden. There is a bearing in there. Let me get my little uh, shop back and clean that up real quick. See if I can knock this bearing out. So this just kind of drops down into a socket kind of in here, but 
is really stuck in place. Um, these have a set screw that kind of holds them in place. And as is common in these, I see a lot of where this metal is just kind of rotting away in here. Hopefully this is salvageable. We may have to pour some new castings to get this thing fixed, but um, well, let's see what happens. I'm probably just gonna have to take a cold chisel and just cut through this um, this uh, screw that goes through here because it's just it's just too rusted to get out. Let me go grab a cold chisel and see if I can just knock that out. See if I can get in here with a sawzall and just cut that out. I got that one out. Got that one out. All this stuff that I'm digging out of here is nothing but just rust just rotted away over the years. It's a mess. Let's see if I can ship some of this out of here. I'm going to keep working it, trying to free this uh, barren shell up over here. And I'm going to have to get this one out over here too. They're both being real stubborn. I'm going to go off camera and work on this for a while. Wish me luck. Well, guys, I managed to get everything apart here. Um, I did it kind of off camera, but basically had the two bearings blocks that were stuck in this and between uh, just banging on them, hammering on them with a brass chisel or brass punch rather, and I got the torch out on, on this bear and it's still a little hot. I heated it up and uh, eventually got it moving. And once I got it moving, it was I was able to work it out. Uh, what happens here is that this rust um, kind of starts separating and it flakes. And when it does, it gets wider and wider and wider and it just builds up those gaps. Uh, and we just had to, I, I burnt some of that rust out. I drilled some of that rust out. It took a good, good bit of work, but we got it, everything loose. Now, uh, you know, let's take a look at what we've got here and kind of evaluate the situation. So I will say that um, 
this meal was a little bit deceiving. Uh, it was a little bit worse shape than what I was anticipating, but uh, it is fully restorable. Uh, it's just going to take some work. The biggest thing is, is as we often see, when these mills sit outside, the water accumulates down in the bottom. Uh, and there, it's hard for that water to evaporate out. And that's where your damage is, is down in these bearing cups. And uh, as we had those pieces stuck in there. Uh, the other big thing that damages on these, these bottom journals. And you can see these are not only worn, but there's a good bit of rust in here. And uh, what's going to have to happen, and I've done this many times before, is we'll get these cleared down. Got a mosquito flying around. We'll get these cleaned up, we'll weld them up, we'll turn them back down on the lathe and um, get them get them trued back up, get them back to the proper size and all will be well. Uh, I'll comment too over here, you know, we've got these little brass inserts uh, for bearings. And uh, this was one of the things that Chattanooga Plow Company uh, did instead of using Babbitt, they typically use bronze. Um, Honestly, though, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take these bronze bushings out. They're pretty much worn out anyway, and we're going to replace them with Babbitt. Um, if I could just call them up and order new ones, I would, but it's going to be a lot of lot more work to make a, a bronze sleeve insert that fits these than it will be to just pour Babbitt in them. And this particular style of, of cup will take Babbitt just fine. Uh, in fact, it's almost identical to the ones that, that do take Babbitt. So, uh, you know, we'll, we're just gonna, we're just gonna replace them with Babbitt, which is what most of the mills had in them back in the day anyway. That's what the Golden's mills and a lot of the other brand mills use Babbitt instead of bronze. These bronze inserts, they were a good idea. Uh, you know, it was something that you could just call them up and order when they got wore out rather than having to do the work of pouring Babbitt. But the problem is, is that uh, you can't order them anymore. They're obsolete. And while I'm sure I could have some cast and made, uh, there's, it's, an, it's an awkward part to finish machine. And uh, I would rather, it's going to be a lot easier and simple and just as good to pour Babbitt on these. So that's what we're going to do. I see a couple other comments I'll make. Oh yeah, on the main roller up here, I think I mentioned it was taken apart. The top shaft is bent. It's not straight. Uh, we'll, we're gonna have to uh, uh, heat that up, straighten it out. And of course, when we turn it, we'll get it trued back up to the drum, but that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but I don't think it's anything we can't handle. Uh, I think I also mentioned this before, the the caps that covered the, the top bearings, they were broken. I've already got a pattern made. In fact, let me show it to you. I'm still doing some finished sanding on this, but this is a, a new, this will be a pattern uh, that we send to the foundry and just have new caps cast. Uh, no big deal. I just threw the, or drew it in uh, Fusion 360 in CAD and uh, it was 3D printed. Uh, I had one of my viewers uh, 3D print it for me. And uh, like I said, we, we'll use that as a pattern, have some new ones cast. I got a little more finished work to do to it before we do that. But, uh, you know, it's basically the same. It's a little bit larger for shrink. Uh, we got some shrink factor built into it. So uh, those will be replaced that. Uh, there were also these little uh, covers that go over the, the bottom bearing halves. These would have fit right in here. This one was cast iron. The other one just had a one that was kind of made out of sheet metal that was on it. Uh, I think I'm going to draw this up, make a pattern for this and have some new little shrouds cast. Uh, the originals were cast iron. So um, we'll probably do that as well. I'll talk to the guy I'm doing this for. It's, it's you know, minimal cost compared to, uh, it, that right there should help kind of keep some of the water from getting in the bottom as well as cane juice and everything else when you're when you're grinding so uh, I imagine we'll do that uh, but yeah I mean I think I think this is a is a restorable mill the good news is is there's nothing that is you know other than this piece here there's really nothing are these two pieces really broken or missing uh, which is good so uh, you know everything is here while everything's not what I would say in the best of shape, by the time we get this cleaned up, uh, it, it'll be fine. It'll be perfectly fine. We'll have to rework our shafts over here, but that's that we we'll do that on just about all of them. Um, so up next, I'm going to load all this stuff up. I'm going to take it to the sandblaster. 
Uh, I've got a commercial sandblasting company that, that I just take this stuff to. It's a lot easier to just pay them to do it than it is for me to try to do all this in my blasting cabinet. It'd take me a, a day to do this in my blasting cabinet. They can do it in about 30 minutes in their commercial setup. Uh, so I'll take it to them and let them do that. And once we get it back, we'll uh, go ahead and get all the, the parts primed and painted and start doing the machining work and the other things to get this going. I will say though, guys, this is gonna be a little bit of a back burner project. Uh, this is not gonna be a high priority for me. Um, I've got some other things in the shop, but I did want to go ahead and get it taken apart and evaluate it. So we will start the process and uh, we'll work in the machine work and everything as we can fit it in and uh, get this cane mill knocked out as quick as we can, but uh, he's not going to need it until this coming fall. This is early, early spring. So we've got several months before this thing's going to be, be needed at least six or seven months. So uh, uh, like I said, it's not going to be a, uh, a high priority job, but we'll get it knocked out. Well, there we go, another uh, cane mill disassembled, evaluated, and started the process on restoring. Uh, while I'm doing this, I've actually got um, another Golden's, I think it's a number two uh, cane mill that is in, it's already taken apart. It was, uh, I picked it up recently from a viewer, uh, and uh, it's, it's actually, it's going to be my cane mill. So, um, uh, it's already been taken apart. It's out back, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and probably work on it while I'm doing this one. When I take this one and get sandblasted, I'm going to get that one all sandblasted as well. I think that it's in pretty good shape. It's actually in better shape than this one, uh, just from my initial evaluation of things. Uh, it is missing the, the, the walking beam part here uh, that fits up on the top, but we can do something about that. I'm not worried about that. Um, but I'm going to probably work on it while I'm working on this one and get them both knocked out. And uh, so there you go, uh, another cane mill project. <laughs> and I've got a few more cane mills that some people have brought to me to restore that we're going to be getting started on before too much longer. And they're a different style, and they're, they're interesting. They're actually uh, power mills. They're, they would have been powered by a flat belt you know, a uh, steam engine or a tractor or something like that rather than mule powered. And they're instead of vertical rollers or horizontal rollers and they're much larger. One of them is really, really, I mean, it's a commercial size cane mill, weighs about 8,000 pounds. So uh, those are gonna be starting to work on those soon as well. Those will be really interesting, I think. So guys, with that, that's gonna be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A thumbs up and comments are greatly appreciated. Uh, hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, and a uh, big, huge thank you all to the, uh, the, the supporters of the site out there and Patreon, PayPal, etc. We really couldn't do everything we do without you guys. And uh, with that, we'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.